Sometimes I think about what I would do if I were held at gunpoint. It's a scenario that comes up a lot in popular culture, and I think how someone reacts in situations like that say a lot about them as people. The more I think about it, the more sure I am that I would respond by complimenting the attacker's gun. The idea popped into my head suddenly, and I rationalized it away as a good plan for striking up a friendly tone to the encounter, which would calm both of us and make the situation less likely to end in bloodshed. Hey, I know you're mugging me or holding me hostage or something, but I get it. It's like the song says, money don't grow on trees. But that's a disingenuous line of thought, though, because I didn't think the plan through like that. No, that idea popped into my head because at the end of the day, I think guns are kinda cool. When I picture a gun like this one, or like this one, or ooh, this one. Oh man, look at this one! Four barrels! Uh, ooh. <laughs> Got distracted there. See, when I picture a gun, my first reaction isn't, holy shit, that thing could kill me. It's, oh nice, how much kick does that thing have? This is a strange reaction for me to have, since I've been raised in an extremely liberal anti-gun household, and I'm the only person in my immediate family that feels that way. After some soul-searching, I can only really think of a single reason. I'm a gamer. Capital G Gamer. Core. Hardcore. Call it what you will. I grew up playing the kind of games that people who pride themselves on being gamers play. Halo, Gears of War, Oblivion, Fallout, God of War, Smash Brothers, Street Fighters, Shooters, RPGs, Fighters, Strategy, Tactics, MOBAs, MMOs, pew pew pew, bang bang, kapow, boom. I love that stuff. Point is, in all those games, guns are your friends. Even in the hands of your enemies, they're just candy waiting for the picking. From, uh, the candy tree. Uh, <clears throat> When the original Borderlands first started advertising itself as having billions of guns, that advertisement was aimed at me. I pre-ordered that thing on the spot. See, when I ask myself where this weird love of guns came from, there's only one answer I can come up with. Video games. These little pieces of media I've been consuming over the course of a lifetime have slowly and subtly altered the way my subconscious feels about a strongly emotionally charged piece of imagery. I can't in good faith come up with any other explanation, and it scares me a little bit to think about. What else have video games changed about me? Yet, on the other hand, I have a keen awareness of how dangerous guns can be. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still pro-gun control. In a way, my politics still line up pretty well with the way they were before. So what we're left with is a really strange dichotomy. I think guns are awesome, but I don't want them anywhere near me. I think I'd be okay in a firefight, or even enjoy one, but there's no way I'd ever volunteer to be in a situation which involves them. So why am I bringing all this up? Well, there's been a lot of discussion lately about feminism in the gaming community. One of the most charged topics is related to Anita Sarkeesian's Tropes vs. Women series, which discusses tropes which he claims propagate sexist ideas. One of the main criticisms she's been getting is this. If video games don't cause violence, how can you say they cause sexism? This is a good question. There have been a lot of studies that indicate that video games don't cause people to commit violent acts. However, these studies have been about actions and not about ideas and associations. Those are far more difficult to measure because they have far more subtle effects. In my case, I'm no more likely to commit a violent act as I would have been otherwise. But the idea of violent acts and the tools that enable those acts are far more positive to me than they otherwise would be. With that in mind, it's really not hard for me to imagine that gaming can influence somebody's ideas and feelings towards women in some way. This brings me to Gamergate. A media discussion podcast titled Digital Drift recently asked their community to send in audio essays discussing Gamergate. I noticed that many of them were from people who loved video games but never considered themselves gamers. For them, looking at this controversy from the outside, the whole thing seemed kind of incomprehensible. From their tactics, to their tone, to their choice of imagery and branding, none of it really seems to make sense to people. I think I know where they're coming from, though, because I was influenced in a similar way by media we all grew up with. Let me give you an example. When Gamergate was in its infancy and still primarily directed towards Zoe Quinn, the people who would become Gamergaters were working in an IRC raid. In a raid, a large group of people coordinate to take down a single common enemy. In it, each individual works to utilize their own specific set of skills to assist the group. They divide up their responsibilities based on what skills are available at any given time. Some people focused on hacking, some people focused on digging for clues, some people focused on public relations, some people focused on networking, some people worked on social engineering, while still others attempted to entertain the group and keep spirits high. Looking back on it, their raid was almost completely unsuccessful. 
their target still has a career, and following the usual pattern only seems to have achieved more popularity in response to her harassment. The world at large and the rest of the gaming community is trying to decide whether to ignore them or laugh, and feminism became even more deeply ingrained in news outlets like Kotaku than they were before. In retrospect, it seems entirely predictable for these sort of tactics to backfire in exactly these ways. If someone calls you sexist and you respond by harassing them, of course that's going to confirm their suspicions. The best way to aid a movement is to directly and blatantly attack it, and gamergators can't resist blatantly and directly attacking anyone they don't agree with. So if it doesn't work, why do people keep doing it? More importantly, where did people get the idea to do this kind of thing in the first place? I'm reminded of this scene from the first season of The Guild. A group of MMO players meet up in real life and struggle with how to interact with each other on a human level, but are galvanized into action when one of their group tries to escape his controlling mother. This scene has it all. Gamers who don't feel like they're capable of dealing with a social problem alone? I've never really felt like I had any control over my life. I, I think that's why I like video games. Check. Grouping up in order to argue with a single individual? She is a formidable opponent. But this could be a great group building exercise. Check. Division of responsibilities? Borg has passive aggressive aggro. DPS begin. Check. Gaming language? Hey, get off our healer. She's squishy. Out of the way, you! I'm immune to poison, lady facelift. Check. Target happens to be a woman? Oddly enough, also check. The cast fall into analogs of their MMO roles and work together to defeat the boss. They literally defeat her, too. She actually faints for a moment there and everything. When I watched that episode, I couldn't help but feel a little jealous. The idea that video game experience can translate that effectively into practice in a real-life situation is a fantasy scenario which is incredibly appealing. They have it all there. Friendship, teamwork, pride, and at the end of it all, a clean and unambiguous victory. This case of art imitating life is oddly ironic now that Felicia Day has also been doxxed, or to use some more MMO terminology, been hit by AoE by people who are acting in a very similar way. So yes, I think I do know why they're acting like this. They're playing a game, even if it's a game that's nowhere near as easy to win as the one depicted in the guild. And you know what? It looks like a fun game! Looking at Twitter right now, the Gamergators have a trending hashtag where everybody is speaking cryptically about secret codes and passwords and writing in ciphers and Latin. I don't know what they're trying to accomplish, but they certainly do look like they're having a blast doing it. I see stuff like this and my first instinct is to want to play too. Maybe not on the same side, but I can't help but wonder what it would be like to play the same game on the other team. I mean, they describe social justice warriors as these skulking shadowy types pulling strings and manipulating people into... making there be more female characters in video games or something? In other words, they make it sound kind of awesome. Wouldn't it be fun to play around in an IRC channel and combine forces and coordinate with others to complete objectives with vague win conditions? Wouldn't it be fun to spy, mind game, and generally fart around the internet with a bunch of like-minded people? Even though somewhere in my heart this is a deeply appealing idea, just like with the gun example, I don't feel like it's a good one. See, when you're playing a competitive game, you need opponents, or the game dies. If I engage them with their own tactics and their own mentality, I would only make the game more entertaining for them. The more entertaining it gets for them, the longer they continue, and the longer they continue, the more people get harmed by their antics. The community at large already knows this which is why they're mostly just ignoring them or laughing at them from a distance. Just like with the gun example, I see something happening and my first instinct is, man, that's awesome, when it really shouldn't be. It's impossible for me to pretend that video games haven't strongly colored the way I see and interact with the world. Video games are a new artistic medium, and I do think they're one with a lot of power to influence us. So I do think it's entirely valid for us to criticize the messages they hold. Up, 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 up. Doop, 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 doop. <sighs> 